Shalom, my dear friends. God bless you. We are continuing together with the study of the Meshalim, of the parables which Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, taught in the land of Israel. In this parable, we would like to learn an important lesson as Yeshua, Jesus, teaching his disciples and a multitude that follow after him as he was on the way to the city of Yerushalayim, ready to go to give his life a ransom for many. This parable is called the parable of the ten pounds, the parable of the ten minas. In Hebrew, it is called Mashal Aseret Hamanim. It is found in Luke 19, verse 11 to 27, as the Lord Yeshua the Messiah was on the wave from Jericho, Yericho in Hebrew, climbing out to Yerushalayim, there where he will appear before the nation of Israel, and ultimately he will be taken to the shameful Roman cross to give his life a ransom for many. And as the people follow after him, we read in uh, Luke chapter 19 and verse 11 this interesting portion of scripture, the parable, the mashal. Verse 11 said, As they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds or ten minas and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have these men to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returning, having received the kingdom, then he commanded the servants to be called to him to whom he given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, Thy pound, thy mina, has gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou another over ten city. Have thou authority over ten cities. And a second came, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise unto him, because thou hast been faithful, be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not so. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not so. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money, into the bank that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury, with interest. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that has not, even that he has shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither 
and slay them before me. Beloved friend, this is very interesting parable, which we must distinguish from the parable that is called the parable of the talents, which is found in Matthew chapter 25. The parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25 is uh, representing required faithfulness. While here, the, the parable of the ten minas represent equal knowledge of God, which all God's people have, and equal opportunities that all God's people have, the opportunities to use our life for the service of the Lord. Yes, all must be faithful, as the parable of the uh, talents uh, represent in Matthew chapter 25, but here we learn the importance of equal knowledge of God, which all God's people have, and equal opportunities which all God's people have and the responsibility to use opportunities to serve the Lord. It's not a matter of gifts, which God gave to the one different gifts than to the other, but it is a matter of equal opportunities that all God's people have. And when we speak about God's people, we speak about God's people in every generation. In the days prior to Israel becoming a nation, in the day when Israel became a nation, when Yeshua gave this parable in the land of Israel by the city not too far from Yerushalayim, and in the days in which you and I live in today, in the church age, is as well that even during the tribulation time, all God's people in any period of time in the history of the world, we have equal knowledge of God, and equal opportunities to serve God in a world in which we live in. Now you notice it is very interesting because in this parable in Luke chapter 19, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, just, just uh, uh, went into the house of Zakai, Zakai, Zacchaeus, in the first day, uh, uh, 10 verses of chapter 19, and he said in the end of these verses, the Son of Man come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zakai, a son of Abraham, a son of faith, believed on him, and he became a child of God. He was lost, but now he became saved. In Hebrew, we say, uh, uh, Musha, Nosha, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, saved him, forgave his sins. And now as he was walking towards the, the uh, traveling towards the city of Jerusalem, everyone that followed him from among the people anticipated that Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, will bring the kingdom. And you notice what we read here in this uh, uh, verse 11, and as they heard these things that Yeshua said to Zakkai, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He also said to Zakia that he was the one, this day is salvation come into this house, for such is he also a son of Abraham, Ben Abraham. When the people heard it, they understood that now the Mashiach Yeshua is going to establish the promised messianic kingdom. But they didn't understand that before the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, will establish the messianic kingdom promised by God to Israel, he must first become the Lamb of God, which will die for the sin of this world. He have already said in the previous chapter, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And all things which are written in the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentile, and they shall mock and spit, sp spitefully entreat him, and spit on him, and they shall scourge him, and put him to death. And on the third day he will rise again. But they did not understand this. That's why in verse 11, uh, uh, we read that they heard what he said, they thought that the kingdom will be established. 
So he taught them this parable, that a kingdom will not be established immediately, and that he that is the son of man first of all have to die, and he will be going to a far country, namely that he will die, will be buried, and will rise again, and will be going far away, namely return to heaven, in preparation for returning to come to establish the promised messianic kingdom and rule and reign over Israel and all the nations of the world. And until his return, the disciples and those that will follow them are required to use the privileges and the opportunities that they have in order to serve the Lord. And that's why, my dear friends, you and I, Whoever we are, whichever gifts God had given to us, we are responsible to use every opportunity to serve the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, because one day he is coming, he is returning, and we will all be before him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, of the Mashiach, that everyone will a show before the Lord how did he live, he or she live their life. And so notice that. In these verses, verse 12 and 13, Yeshua begin with the parable. And you remember that he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and he delivered unto them ten pounds. And he said unto them, occupy till I come. Now notice that. Ten servants, ten pounds, each one received the same amount of pounds. Very different uh, in that which we read in Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the talents. Everyone received a different amount of talents because of the different gifts that they had. But here there are no different kinds and amounts of talents. There is the same amount, ten servants, Ten minas, ten pounds, and the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, said unto his servants, Occupied till I come. And then he began by telling them the parable in the next verses. We find out in verse 14, first of all, of Luke chapter 19, that the citizens of that uh, uh, nobleman's uh, kingdom hated him because he said in verse 12, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Then he called these 10 servants to give them 10 pounds that they will serve him as he have gone to a far country. But the citizens of this country here that he was going to receive this country and to rule over them, they hated him. They didn't like him. And that, of course, represent initially the people of Israel who didn't acknowledge Yeshua as the Messiah and rejected him from being the Mashiach, the Savior. But it's also going beyond Israel because in a time in which we live in today, the Lord is the one who is king of kings. He will come one day to rule over this world. And those that reject him today and refuse to accept him are the ones that ultimately will be judged by the coming, returning noblemen that have gone into a far country to receive the kingdom and come back to rule over this world. Now, it is very interesting because in this, uh, uh, the mashalim, the, the parables are stories that the Lord Jesus the Messiah is teaching his disciples and those that follow after him from events that did occur in the time in which he was here on earth. Well, we know very well that King Herod's son, by the name of Archelaus, Herod Archelaus, his father killed the Jewish boys from two years and under, as we read it in Matthew chapter 2, verses 16 to 18. And when his father died, Archelaus became the, uh, the king. He actually went to Rome to uh, um, receive an approval of the fact that he would become the king over the area where his father ruled. But the Jewish people sent a delegation to Rome saying, we will have not this man to rule over us. 
And based upon this, Yeshua used this interesting parable. The nobleman went to a far country to receive a kingdom and to return. Then we read in verse 14, the citizens hated him and they sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to rule over us. While the parable was taken from Archelaus, Herod Archelaus, where the Jewish people didn't want him to rule because of he was a wicked man, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, applied this to himself and saying, here we have citizens of this world that rejected him and do not want him to rule over them. But his servants receive the, uh, in the privilege and the responsibility to a trade with the minas, with the a pounds that he had given unto them until he will return from his journey. And so, my dear friend, we find out in verses 16 to 21 here in this interesting parable that three servants came to give an account. The first one in verse 16 says, Lord, your pound has gained 10 pounds. He actually gained 1,000%. If you gain one pound, it will be 100%. 10 pounds, 1,000 percent. He is the one that will receive a reward. As the Lord tells him here in verse, uh, in verse um, uh, 17, he said, Well, thou good servant, because you have been faithful, you will have <coughs> 10 cities to rule over with. Then the second one, gain five pounds. He occupied, he served his master. He shared the gospel. He ministered uh, to those that needed to hear about the person of the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. He was faithful as well. He didn't gain 10 pounds, but he gained five pounds, 500%. And the reward was that he will receive a rulership over five cities. But here, my dear friend, notice that in verse 20, we read of a 20 and 21 of another servant, but he was unfaithful servant. In verse 20, we read another came and he said, Lord, he said to him, behold, here's the pound. Here's the mina that you gave me. I'm giving this to you back because I've laid it aside in a napkin. I kept it until you will return. And why I did so? Because I was afraid. Because you are an austere man. In Hebrew, it is called ish kashe. You take what you do not lay for yourself. You reap what you did not sow. And he says to him, here is what you gave me. And then notice what the nobleman said to him, namely the Lord Jesus as a judge who will also judge his own people, his own servants. He said unto him, out of your own mouth will I judge thee, you wicked servant. He was an unfaithful servant. He had equal opportunity as the other nine. But instead of using his opportunities to serve the Lord, he was is hiding that which the Lord gave him. He didn't trade. He didn't serve. He didn't use it for the glory of this Lord that gave him this mina. And that's why when the Lord returned, with the, when the nobleman returned, he said to him, you wicked servant, you tell me, you knew me, that I'm an austere man. Why didn't even you put the, the money that I gave you in a bank that I will, give an, I will get an interest? You should have at least put it in a bank that I will gain an interest from that. And you see, here is a lesson for us. If we knew our Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, we would love to serve him for all what he has done for us to serve him in some small way in various areas where God had placed us in this world. That does not mean that everything will be perfect and trouble-free, but that means that the privilege of serving the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, who is that nobleman that have gone to a far country via the cross. He paid for the sin of this world. 
And he went back to heaven. God said to him, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And he's returning one day to deal with his enemies, but also to reward his servants that followed after him and served him. Notice the last verses of this parable in Luke chapter 19. We read in verse uh, 22 to 24, he was really uh, 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 disciplining him. And what's happened, he said, we read here, he said unto them that, uh, that stood by, he said, take from him that one pound and give it to the, th to the one that had 10 pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has 10 pounds already. And he said unto them, he said, to every one that hath it shall be given. And from him that has not even that which he has shall be taken away from him. You see, my dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, God called us to be serving the Lord, serving God. Whichever era God's people are or were prior to Israel, the nation in the days of Adam until Abraham, from Abraham until the Messiah came, from the resurrection of the Messiah until the last days of the church age, during the time of the tribulation, in every generation, God's servants are called to be faithful to him and to serve him wherever he placed them. And ultimately, he will reward those that will serve him because we all must appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, of Christ. One day, the reward will be given to those who faithfully serve Him. And whatever we haven't done for the Lord will be burned. But whatever was done for the Messiah, for Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, will remain for a reward to be given. But notice that, to the unregenerated world, we read in verse uh, uh, 27, that is for the enemies, the unbelievers, the unregenerated one. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither, we read, slay them before me. How sad will it be for those who did not accept the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. How sad it will be for those who say, we will not have this man, namely the son of man, Ben Adam, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. We will not have him to reign over us. These unregenerated unbelievers will end up to suffer the consequence of their own sin. How sad will that be? May God help us for all to recognize that the Lord Jesus is indeed the Messiah who came to seek and to save that which was lost. And also for us who are believers on him to serve him faithfully. May he help us to do so. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.